Hello there, welcome to another video. I am rocking the Christmas jumper, winter jumper, even though it is the 29th of February. It is March tomorrow. February has been a bad trading month for me. I've taken lots of trades and it hasn't been profitable. It's one of those months where I'm going to end with a loss. On a more positive note, I do have some good positions open and I'm moving into March with these positions. Some of them have already locked in profit with stop losses. Pound New Zealand dollar is the main one, a long position. I'm also short Singapore dollar yen. So fingers crossed, March is much better. The last video I did like this, I spoke about my Forex trading journey. I really spoke about my trading story from beginning to where I am today. I spoke about challenges, milestones, those sort of things. If you haven't watched that video, find it, go back and watch it and come back to this video. I want to carry on the theme from the last video and talk about my Forex trading journey, but I want to focus on specifics how I actually did it. It's great having this motivational, inspirational story, but how did I actually do it? How do I actually trade? How do I view the markets? How do I trade the markets now compared to when I first started trading? So that's what I want to focus on in this video. As always, any questions, leave them in the comment section below. I do have some questions that I want to go through before we really get into the nitty gritty. So let me bring them up now. So these are questions from the last video. Uh, the first questions were about fundamental analysis. Um, let's have a look here. Um, you spoke briefly about the beginnings of incorporating fundamental analysis into your trading. Were there any, were there other catalysts for this change besides you mentioned becoming fed up? So in the previous video, I mentioned about becoming a bit fed up with my results. They were very mediocre. So I went into fundamental analysis and that's what the person is referring to. There were other catalysts such as my personal ambition. And I guess that is very similar to being fed up with mediocre results. I wanted to make something big, you know, I wanted to be better. Apart from the ambition, in the sense of making a high return, I also wanted to be taken more seriously. I wanted to be more professional in my trading and to be taken more seriously and to act like a professional in this trading industry, you have to use fundamental analysis. If I'm approaching people and I want to trade with their money, if I'm setting up some sort of fund, which I am in the process of doing, telling potential investors, oh, I look at support and resistance zones and trade Japanese candlesticks, they're not going to take you seriously enough. So I have to, I had to have some sort of fundamental foundation. I had to at least talk the talk. Even if I could walk the walk, I could at least I need to at least talk about fundamental analysis and use an element of fundamental analysis in my trading. So that's another reason why um, I started using fundamental analysis. I'm kind of being put on the spot with these questions. I haven't really thought about them. Um, so if I haven't really answered the question sufficiently enough, then please let me know in the comment section below. Other traders that inspired you. I had books that I read that were inspirational. Pitbull by Martin Schwartz. There's the classic reminiscences of a stock operator. But I don't follow anybody. I don't follow any traders online. I don't even know who the top educators are, the top traders are. Um, they're not people that I they focus on. I listen to interviews on Bloomberg. And they have all sorts of people on there from traders to asset managers, hedge fund managers, 
analysts and all sorts. And there are particular people that I do like listening to more than others, um, potentially respect more than others, but I don't really follow them and I wouldn't recognize them if I passed them in the street. You know, it's not something I do religiously. So there are no other traders really that inspired me. Resources that you use. I use Trading Economics. So if you're going to, going to use fundamental analysis, you need to use a website called Trading Economics that has all the historical data for interest rates, inflation rates, unemployment rates, retail sales, balance of trade, etc. You can also uh, subscribe to alerts on that website and be notified when new figures are released. They have an economic calendar also that you can view to see when upcoming news events are approaching what's happening that day so that's definitely a resource i use on a daily basis apart from that you know i mentioned listening to bloomberg re reading the financial times i mentioned that in the previous video there's nothing else really that i use uh, that's it any breakthrough moments not really I guess the only breakthrough moment was when I started using fundamental analysis and seeing the difference. I was able to take fewer trades, but get very similar results or better results. So that was a breakthrough moment. And that was it. That's the only breakthrough moment I remember. A bit boring. I know. Sorry to disappoint. Okay. Moving on to somebody else. Um, what is the biggest trading drawdown in percentage of your career so since i've been profitable what's the biggest drawdown i've had it's different per strategy than as a whole because i trade more than one strategy but for a single strategy i've had like a 25 percent drawdown it's a lot isn't it but you're learning this video when I share my equity curve with you, that you just keep going. And that's one of the biggest challenges of trading. The psychological challenge of trading whilst in a drawdown is a huge challenge. And we'll come to that a bit later on. Okay, how to, this is another person, how to become a trader while working nine till five. Well, a lot of you listening either work full time, have children that you're trying to care for full time or are in education. So most of you listening have some sort of commitment. This is why swing trading suits most people. If you're working nine till five, I suggest you swing trade. You set aside an hour every evening, eight till nine, something like that. We can analyze the market and take swing trades. You don't have to day trade to be profitable. And I never actively encourage people to day trade at all. Stick with swing trading. So if you do have other commitments that shouldn't not really impact your your swing trading. The key is consistency, you know, block that time every day. Don't get sucked into the belief that you can day trade the end of the US session or day trade 2 hours every evening. That's not going to work. Sorry to uh, uh, to burst the bubble. That's not going to make you profitable, I'm afraid. If you're going to day trade, you need to be at your charts, sit in front of your screens for the day. For swing trading, you can get away with an hour a day. So swing trade. That is the questions. Any questions you have for me now, or as this video progresses, leave them in the comment section below. And I'll answer them, I'll answer them in a, a future video. Okay. Where to start? So how did I do it? How did I get from losing trader 12 years ago, 13 years ago, to where I am today? The first thing to really talk about, and the first thing you need to think about when you want to take a trade, is direction. Which way is this market heading? Do I want to be going long? Do I, do I want to be going short? Or do I want to miss this currency pair 
completely and focus on another currency pair. Direction is a big part of your analysis and it's something you need to know before you enter any trade. So what I've been doing the last 12, 13 years to make money from Forex is to focus on market direction. And I've done that in two ways. So using fundamental analysis, that's the, the main way I get a market bias. Am I looking to buy the euro? Am I looking to sell it? Am I looking to buy the yen? Am I looking to sell it? And that's all based on fundamental analysis. How do I come to the conclusion of buying a currency and selling another using fundamental analysis? It's all to do with inflation rates and interest rates. So if inflation is too high, and then I'll put this in layman terms, let's keep things simple. I do have other content about fundamental analysis that will go into more detail about this. But to keep things simple, if inflation is too high, then you can safely say that interest rates could go up. That's going to strengthen the currency. If inflation is too low, or if a central bank wants to stimulate an economy, the economic data is pretty rubbish, pretty stagnant, countries in recession, then they could cut rates. That weakens a currency. Now, there's a bit more to it than that, but tracking inflation is the best way to forecast interest rates. And it's in. Yeah, interest rates are the main driving force when it comes to currency direction. Unless there's something crazy happening, like COVID or a global recession. If one of those things are happening, then obviously that's going to be the driving force behind the market. But generally speaking, it's all to do with interest rates. Now, if interest rates are not enough, then you can use economic figures, review unemployment rates, retail sales, balance of trade, GDP growth. These things are also a way to gauge if an economy is doing well or if it's not doing so well. And I have mentioned already, but there are other videos I have about this. So I have a, a spreadsheet. Let me bring my spreadsheet up, actually. It's going to confuse you. But just to add some clarity or try to add some clarity to what I'm doing. So this is my fundamental analysis spreadsheet. There's lots of tabs here. I've got in, I track inflation and interest rates for every country, um, as well as these other sort of figures, unemployment rate, PMI figures. But what I have here is, do I think rates are going up, pausing or cutting? That gives me my bias for a currency. I then have something called a minor bias, which is the analysis of all these economic figures, which I consider more minor compared to interest rates, unemployment rate, GDP growth, PMI, retail sales, balance of trade. I do have a fundamental analysis course that covers this, including this spreadsheet. So you can go ahead and find that and, uh, and watch that if you're interested in this. If you have no interest in fundamental analysis whatsoever and I didn't for a long time then I would use the weekly time frame for my bias is price up trending is it down trending is it moving sideways on the weekly time frame that would give me my market bias you have to have some sort of bias you have to have some sort of inclination of what future direction is going to be before you take a trade and that really is the foundation of all of my trades is where is future price going to be? Is it going to be higher, lower, or pretty much the same? If it's pretty much the same, I'm not interested. If it's going to be higher, if it's going to be lower, I'm interested. I can go long, I can go short. So having some sort of directional bias is the first step. Now, I keep looking away from the camera because I have a, a few positions open that I'm trying to monitor. Once you have a bias, whether through fundamental analysis or technical analysis, you need some sort of way to 
enter the market, where you're going to enter, and where are you going to get out. That's get out at a loss or, or get out for a profit. And what I've done over the last 12 years is use multiple time frame analysis and support and resistance. So looking at this chart in front of me, this is Canadian dollar, Swiss franc. Let's see my, my bias is buy the Canadian dollar, sell the Swiss franc. So let's go long Canadian dollar, Swiss franc. Once I've got my bias, my direction, what I do is look for price to be at potential supply zones, support zones, where it could reverse and move higher. When price is at one of those support areas, daily support, weekly support, even monthly support, it's just that, that higher time frame support and resistance that interests me, I then scale down to lower time frames and look for the lower time frames to signal some sort of reversal up. Obviously, if I'm looking to go short, then some sort of reversal down. And that's how I've done it when it comes to trading strategy. It's really focused on having some sort of analysis in place to forecast future price direction, using multiple time frame analysis with support and resistance and lower time frames. Obviously, there's more to it than that, which I'll cover in a moment. And obviously, the the strategy I use, how I mark support and resistance, what I look for in lower time frames, it would take you a while to learn that. I can't cover that all in a single video. And they're the sort of things that I cover on my website in my exclusive course. I'm not trying to plug the course. I'm just trying to um, clarify that there's more to, to this. Um, you're not going to learn it watching a 40-minute video. Okay, let, let's bring up my equity curve. Now, this is an equity curve from one of my strategies. It's my main trading strategy. Let's get rid of this, and let's bring this up. This is my main trading strategy, and this is the last... 300 odd trades using this trading strategy okay so let's get rid of this make it nice and big okay at first glance most people see this equity curve and say wow great results well done Sam congratulations what they don't see is the emotional toil and commitment involved to create an equity curve like this. And the reason why I'm showing you this equity curve is this will also help to explain how I've done it, how I've become a profitable trader. So you can see there's 300 trades here. This is just over two years of data. So I record every single trade that I take, and that's something else that I've had to do in order to become profitable, is to record every single trade, the date, the result, the currency pair, track my win rate. It's easy if you connect your account to like MyFXBook or something like that, um, but I personally keep a manual record on Excel. In the beginning, I also tracked why I took the trade. I suggest keep as many records and as detailed records as possible. It's really going to help you to um, to refine your trading strategy. You'll start noticing areas in your record, areas of your strategy that aren't performing well, areas that perform better. It really helps you to refine as a trader, perhaps times a day, if you record the time of day to the trade. You might notice every tra trade you've taken for the last year that's after three o'clock is a loser. So you could stop doing that as an example. So keep detailed records. That's the first thing about an equity curve is to have an equity curve, you need to have detailed records in place. So keep detailed records. It's something else I've had to do over the last 12 years, 13 years, maybe even 14 years now. Um, it's been a while. So this is how I trade. This is my equity curve for my diagonal level strategies. This is diagonal levels on daily and weekly time frames. 
combined with fundamental analysis and technical analysis. Fundamental analysis for direction, technical analysis for entry and exit. This is 300 trades. That is a lot of trades. The equity curve didn't go, if I bring up a pen, you know, it didn't go from here, zero to 100, over 100 trades, or two months, or a week. This is like two years of data, 300 trades. That is a lot of trades, 300 trades. I've taken using this trading strategy and I have multiple trading strategies. So I'm taking a lot of trades. That doesn't mean I'm taking trades everywhere based on my emotions. There are fundamental and technical reasons for these trades. So that's something else you need to learn is stick to your trading strategy. All these trades on this equity curve fit the rules of my trading strategy. There's no emotionally led trades. Something else you need to learn. Something else that I've done the last 12 years. There's no emotionally led trades on this equity curve at all. They fit my trading strategy. I trade the rules, nothing else. I'm losing my trail of thought. So 300 trades here. There are two key things that, that stick out. Number one is the frequency of drawdowns and drawdowns as a whole. So every time this is coming down, this equity curve is coming down, there is a drawdown. There's a massive one here, which we'll come to in a moment. So each time this comes down even a little bit, there's a drawdown. I'm having some sort of drawdown on a monthly basis, at least. I'm having losing trades frequently. If my win rate is 50% and I've taken 300 trades, then about 150 trades I've taken spaced out over those 300 trades have been losing trades. Okay, so I'm losing frequently. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm having drawdowns frequently. The real test is how big are those drawdowns? And I'll touch on that a bit in a moment. Um, so how big are those drawdowns? And what you do when you're in a drawdown. Every time I'm in one of these drawdowns, I'm in a drawdown at the moment. Look, I peaked. This is late last year. This is January and February's trading. As mentioned, February hasn't been a good month, which is this, this drop here. What I choose to do here really determines if I'm going to be successful as a trader or not. When you're in a drawdown, you carry on trading. Most traders give up when they start losing money. This equity curve probably has 50 times where I could potentially have given up. 50 drawdowns. You have to stick to the rules. You have to trade through the drawdown. That's what is shown here, is a trader that's in a drawdown but keeps going. So that's how I've done it the last 12 years. Obviously, the technical skill, looking at the charts, analyzing the fundamental skill, but the mental skill is to keep going even though you're losing. Now, one of these drawdowns here, Let's say that's about 80, let's just say 80. That was trade 80. I didn't come out of this drawdown until trade, say, 210. So it took me about 120, 130 trades to get out of this drawdown. Probably the biggest drawdown I've ever had. And this is the one I mentioned earlier, answering someone's question about like a 25% drawdown. This is it. This was that biggest drawdown that I've ever had for a, a single strategy. Let me ask you, if you hit drawdown and 50 trades later, you were still in a drawdown, would you give up on the trading strategy? Most of you have or would. 
Hence why you're not successful. You have to keep going. You have to have trust and faith in the trading strategy that if you just keep going, things will pay off long term. And they did. You know, I went from, say, a 45, 50% return to well over 100 now because I just stuck at it. It's not necessarily the amount of trades that's a problem. It could be the amount of time. What you don't see here is, you know, this could have been four or five months of trading. I can't remember how long it was. That doesn't mean I had four or five months consecutive losing months because some of those months were actually winning months. And coming to the end here, so the last three months were actually profitable trading months. But it took five months to reach my peak and climb higher. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, let me know. So drawdown is one of the things I wanted to mention. The other thing I wanted to bring up about this equity curve is when things are coming down, they come down fairly slowly and steadily compared to when they're rising. So if we look at these sharp rises, or just look at these rises, they're sharp, aren't they? They're quite aggressive. Whereas we look at the drawdown periods, they're quite slow and steady. Well, what does that teach you? It teaches you that my losses are always capped and they're small compared to my winners. So my winners are big. Some of these moves up are like a 10% move in a day or from a single trade. Whereas all of these moves down are anywhere from, say, 0.1% to 1% max. So being consecutive, uh, being consistent with those losses and capping those losses to a very small amount, but letting your winners be big is how I've also done it the last 12 years, how I've become profitable. So it's not just about direction and entry and exit. It's also about that mental um, energy and self-discipline, control, self-control to carry on trading when things are bad but also to ensure that your winners are big. When I have a winner, it's big, huge. And you can see that on the chart here. So that's how I've done it. That's how I went from a bad trader to a good trader. The, other, the last thing I mention about these big winners is a lot of people aren't profitable because they can't let their winners run. You know, they might see that their winning trade is up $50, 50 pounds, and they want to take it, so they close it. But what they're not seeing is that their losses are also $50, 50 pounds, or $20, 20 pounds. You're not going to become profitable on one-to-one -one risk reward ratios or two-to-one uh, reward to risk. It needs to be big. And the professional traders I've learned from in the past, the winners are big, very big. That's what I've tried to, to mimic. And that's why on this equity curve, we have these big moves up. Hopefully that's provided more clarity to how I trade and how I've done it. Hopefully you've taken some notes, rewatch the video. If you haven't, I appreciate you being with me. Let's do another competition. I keep doing these. If you want to win access to my course, if you want to learn exactly how I trade, all you need to do is like the video, leave some sort of comment below. That could be a question. It could just be great video, Sam, thanks, or whatever. Leave some sort of comment below. Drop me an email and I'll enter you into the competition to an access to my exclusive course. If you already have access to the course, then I'll give you free access to my trading room. That's the competition. Like, leave something in the comment section below and drop me an email. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. I really wish you all the best in your trading. I hope that this video has given you something to think about at least if not something to apply. I want you to improve as a trader. I'll speak to you in another video.